Hello, 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 and welcome to a very special episode of the Choker Bros. I'm joined by two special guests, Lawrence Oliva and Josh Gu. How are you gentlemen doing? Excellent. Good. Thanks for having us. Good. So before we get started, I want a sh- special shout out to our sponsor, Cars of Evilies. Thank you for everything you do for this podcast. Check them out for your singles, and uh, they've been nominated for some awards. Um, so check check them out. Speaking of awards, that's the, the big subject here, FFTCG NA Awards Ceremony. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's coming up on January 29th. It's going to be streamed from 5 to 7, uh, and basically what it is is Team Tantalus and the Choker Bros are putting this together as a really fun way to recognize the NA community. Uh, if you're not from NA, cool. We, we still love you, but and you're welcome to join in and, and sound off in the chat. Um, Josh, you're not banned from Twitch chat yet, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not yet, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll love to hear you guys sound off, but there are a lot of questions about it, um, and we're going to try our best to answer some of those questions as well, you know, uh, Lawrence had a lot of, uh, a, a lot more knowledge going into it than I did. He's been part of the process since the beginning. So he'll be able to answer a little bit more of the questions than I can. And Josh can basically just make fun of us for whatever our answers we have. <laughs> it seems like it's going to be pretty good. So first off, how did we come up with this idea, Lawrence? So last week I was out of town and I'm sitting in my hotel room and Jordan messages me. And he's like, yo, for our next podcast, we got to do like, like some like Emmy award shit or something. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, OK, what, what do you want to do? <laughs> so we start just pinging ideas back and forth off each other. And then, you know, a couple hours later, like we hit you guys up. He's like, you know, we should we should collaborate with somebody. We should, you know, talk to Sam and see if they're down with that. And 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 that was the makings, man. That was the beginning. Yeah. And whenever he approached me with the idea i immediately thought okay this this is one of those willy wonka the office episode chocolate you know uh the the golden ticket ideas right where like (laughs) it's quite genius it could backfire very easily (laughs) (laughs) but we hope that it goes well yeah and that was real big for us that like we approached it the right way even though it's something that um we're collaborating on it's entirely 100 percent backed by us not not in any kind of official capacity from square enix and we just you know right. it's 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 for you by you right. right and it's and we haven't announced the prizes yet but we're working on uh some something pretty exciting um i'm very very excited about the prizes um and we're paying for them ourselves. This is 100% coming out of our pocket. And we're just we're just in it to to have a good time with it. Um, so so we came up with the ideas, right? So we came up with categories, and we have I, I don't know if some of these names have changed, but I can go over the, the categories real quick. We have grinder, best judge, content creator, uh, the most innovative, best card, the best shop, the best website, the best moderator. Uh, the most frequent bubbler, the best team, uh, the greatest community leader, and the MVP. Those are all pretty good categories. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. We had uh, probably two or three times that to begin with, yep. all different kinds of things, and we felt like that was the best condensed, streamlined, yep. most, most recognized kind of kind of people. So. Yep. So now, Josh, real quick, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to... I'm gonna extend this. If this was, if this was more extensive, to than just NA. If this was international. If this was on the fans page. Okay. If the fans decide to do this, I'm gonna ask you a real quick question. I want you to give me the first answer, the best answer that comes to your head. You ready? I don't think you're ready, though. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the best? I'm not sure I should answer this question. Okay. No. Actually, I'm gonna start at the top. Who does the most grinding? Plays in the most events. Okay. Grind. I think Jamie Faulkner should be should be winning the best grinder, right? Okay. Like he, he's literally like everywhere. Best judge. Best judge. I don't know. I, I I'm literally the, I I only know one judge, like two judges, and that's Chris and Ryan. Okay. okay. But you only get one best judge. Uh, I would say Ryan because he actually judged for world. So. Okay. Uh, best content creator. Best content creator. Hmm. 
Joe Hill, I think. Joe, yeah, Joe Hill's awesome. Good, Joe good Hill's answer. Awesome. I, I thought you'd go with Crystal uh, Tower, but Joe Hill's also on that. So, <laughs> uh, the Thank most, you. the most. Oh, I, I'm gonna love your answer here. The most innovative deck builder. <laughs> okay, give me a second. I'm gonna go with the man himself. I'm gonna, <laughs> well, I, I don't want to say. I think. I think. I think that. Um, I I actually said this before, but like I. But you know, it's not cool if I myself say it, you know. Okay. But I think that um <laughs> You can vote for yourself. Um, I think that Joshua Freeman, uh me and Toby, we, we, we probably do like I think. That's fair. Okay. The best card the best card, period. The best card period. Uh I I'll say Ilua. But Ilua has, has some weaknesses. Oh, the thing I, is, like that's the card I hate the most. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. She, you know, actually, you know, actually, Toby doesn't like Ilua. Like, doesn't like because, it because uh, it's a bad card, or just is annoyed by its presence. No, he doesn't like it. He 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 he, he would prefer not to play it. It's not like his style, you know. Because uh, Ilua is off curve, and uh, of course, yeah, she has like this, this, this effect and stuff like that. But she's not like like a value unit on her own. I really prefer to play it. Right, but she's more of a team player. Like the, we have to understand that you are like it's one of those cards that actually could solo win the game for 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 nothing for no reason. You play a special, yeah, and you use it to cancel a a Zalera or cancel a a Glacia, yeah. or you use it to block something, yeah. and you you are halfway to win. That's why I do like. CPL that's why I do like the the nominations of Fasoya. Uh, Dalluma and Wall. I feel like all three of those can often win the game on their own as well. Yeah, but yeah, I guess. But Dalluma is like one of those cards where you have to like have the right. cactus and stuff. Because without cactus, it's basically like it's, well, it's, it's not. Uh, Alu is kind of crappy without uh, her special. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, but without show, it's one card. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I know what you mean. Question: Best shop, the best card shop. That's card shop. I think card shop, but I would say the best card shop should be Dark Spear. I only went there once, but you know, Dark Spear seems to have produced the most like world class players. Oh, yeah, they do have and some of the best players. Sure. You know, I went there, like the atmosphere is completely different. Like people are all there to like, you know, really play, you know, and stuff like that. So Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, the best <laughs> this or the best website, the best TCG website. FFDEX. FFDEX. Now, I know you use Magnet as well, right? You use both. Yeah, I use both, but, uh, like, you know, I mean, Magnet is just a directionary of all the, all the cards, you know, it's not anything special. Like, I gotcha. You just like the actually, search engine a little more. Like, FFDEX, you actually need to build it and everything, and I feel the UI design. Like, I'm, I'm coming from a tech background. I actually, like, right. I worked gotcha. on many, like, multi So, you know, the, the everything's done really well, very high professional level. Okay, now I have a really great question for you, okay? <laughs> Only because of your, your current bannings in both groups. Who is the best yeah. moderator? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea who the moderators are. That's the thing. Hey, so hey, I'll, I'll go hey, hey Josh. You're, you're one of the moderators, uh, right? Okay, yeah, I am. I was going to say, Josh, I'm a moderator. <laughs> All right, how, how about, how about the awesome. person to bubble the most? The Ninth place, the Bubble. most ninth place finishes. I don't know about this. I don't know who the hell this guy is, okay? But I heard a lot about him from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So apparently this guy, Greg or something from, from, from the US, apparently uh, he's he, like, all the time or some shit. He's on, yeah. he's, he's on the list. Oh yeah, so so probably him, right? Like I yeah. mean like, I, you know, I was looking at the NA uh, uh, awards thing uh -huh. and I'm like, you know, I okay. This sounds really bad. Actually, yeah, should I do? What's up, boys and girls? Mr. Cool here. Turns out the audio was just interrupted by a strange rift in the void. Uh, basically, Josh was saying something about something and something else. Yeah, I, I don't know. He's a nerd anyway. Uh, give me a moment to replay this rift, and I'll have you right back with Sam. Say cool, guys. All right. Because so, I, I knew he was gonna be yeah. a, a, a right, shit show. Yeah. Okay, so how about uh, best team? Best team. Mm -hmm. Team Joby, kidding. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. I, it's got to be between Dark, uh, Dark Sphere and uh, Meta Potion, right? I feel like those those are two people I would put up there very highly. I, I don't know, man. Dark Sphere, I don't think Dark Sphere people have a team. That's the thing. They, I mean, they all oh, do well. I figure they, they kind of like, ran as a team. Yeah, like, yeah, like Lone Rangers. Yeah. Maybe that's why they're so good, too. Like, they just, like, they are such competition towards each other. Yeah, they're killing each other. And I, I wish I, I played, like, you know, it's a huge advantage to actually play in Dark Sphere. Because you have all the top players, so you go to a local, and it's like tournament night, you know? It's like world yeah. championship. Everything. Right, you dominate with your Flandit deck, and you're like, yeah, I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. Because it, that's, that's, playing versus great players and playing versus scrubs is, is like completely different game. It's, it's not even the same game. Okay, so how about best community leader? Best community leader. I would say Alex Hancock. I was gonna say he, because yeah, I could see him make it. Mr. Cool could definitely make that list. So, and and I'll say that I think you're a great community leader too, man. But yeah, I think like Alex, uh, he fights, he fights for us. You know, he's like, oh know, yeah, he, he was like quite vocal. That's right, band, right. Like, so he wins, he wins, he wins the world championship, and he's immediately like, hey, I don't like this. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, man, the man, the man himself says what's on his mind, which I can appreciate. I I do appreciate that. <laughs> It was about the uh, the Winter Cup. He's like, hey, what about, you know, thanks thanks for winning Worlds. Here's what I don't like about the Winter Cup. Uh, which was, well, they're all really good points, though. I like that he's willing to, to stick what, it to the man. <laughs> um, you know, it was about the prize support. It seemed very top-heavy, which was an, an issue for it being a very fun community event, you know? Uh, uh, it, it would be like this. So let's say let's say our prizes. We're not going to tell you what they are, but let's say our prizes for this thing. We gave like the MVP like a huge giant award, and then we gave like the best website like basically nothing. You know, we, that's not the point of this. The point of this is just it's fun. It's a it's a community thing. So we're going to pretty much give these guys all equal awards, which I which you know I could see that being the case for the Winter Cup. It's really just a fun event. Um, people went to have a good time, and it seemed like they did have a good time. Uh, okay, and Josh, here's the best question: Who is the most valuable player in the world? Valuable? What do you mean? Like they can they contribute the most, they play the best, they have the consistent records, they're traveling to events, they're doing well in events. Mm. I guess it's Alex. I guess. Like uh, right currently, I mean, like it's it's quite simple to answer. It's very it's very hard to to argue with that. Yeah, it, it, let, let's, just, let's just say that like I have some tough competition. I I have I do not plan on winning MVP. In fact, I can almost certainly tell you I won't. But I would much rather be in any league outside of Mr. Cool's league. You know, <laughs> like how is that even fair? Like to be against the world champion. Man, you want to be yeah, the but, best. You got to beat the best. Hey, man. I agree, I agree with that. But I don't want to beat them in a competition that I have no chance in. You know, <laughs> like I think I think I could beat Mr. Cool in a game in a game of Final Fantasy. Not necessarily as much as he might beat me, but I have zero chance of beating him on a survey and anything ever in life. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, this Mr. Cool is is an interesting character. Like I you know, you know, I uh, Alex is actually the first person who taught me how to play on OCPGM. Mm-hmm. So he he actually like the I, I, the first time I ever would log into OCTGN, I was playing versus Alex. Are you the only person in the world that calls it OCTGN and not Octagon? Oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> I've, 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 I've only heard it called Octagon. <laughs> I think of Octagon. I think of the UFC, right? So yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, and and like uh, I feel like he he he's a very interesting character because if you meet him, he's really quiet and stuff. There. But then yeah. like online and like over media and stuff, like he has like this really big persona. And he's always like there to help people, you know. Like I never heard him say no to me. So he's got he, he's got the heart behind it. He's got the skill and the heart. Yeah, exactly. Right. And like That's even awesome. before worlds, like not not like right before worlds, but like after he won the Europe Cup. I was asking him like a ton of, you know, that's how I am. I ask people tons of questions, right? I asked him a ton yeah. of questions about like his dad and all something. And he was like, no trouble answering, answering me and everything. He just tells me straight up. Right. No, I, I can appreciate that about him for sure. Um, and, and, and also he contributes back to the community with his podcast and all the, th and the questions he has. And he fights for things that, you know, he thinks is, is just, which I think is great. So let's he likes 
Go ahead. Uh, huh? I'm, uh, you're, not, you're, not cu you're cutting in and out. Uh, Lawrence, let me ask you some more about uh, about this system. So we came up with the idea. It was really cool. Uh, as soon as I came on, I was like, okay, guys, I'm creating a spreadsheet. <laughs> like, I'm making yeah. this happen. Uh, because I think one of the failures is when you're trying to get a project like this off the ground, is organization is nearly impossible. Um, and I, I know that from, from working with, uh, some people in other projects that, you know, just keeping a spreadsheet is a really great idea and it came along really well. Um, one of the things we had trouble with is find making sure we had enough nominees for all these categories, right? Right. Um, tell us a little bit, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about a little bit of the ones that I know a little bit more of. Tell us a little bit about like, for example, how we came up with like best card, because that's one of the ones that people have to, we have to admit is a bit subjective. Um, but is there an argument outside of these particular cards as being, I mean, sure. Like we have like, we, we don't have seven drop staff growth on the list. He hasn't had a lot of time to shine, but there's sure. no doubt that that card is insane. Um, Interesting enough, we don't have Sid 2 on the list when I think it's in the top two. I know Jordan thinks it's in the top two, uh, but it didn't make this list. So tell us a little bit about how the best card nomination process. I think the, the, the best way that we approached this was it was twofold. So we not only wanted to select cards that were almost always in top performing lists, but also that either when they come down or when they're on board, ready to do something, how actually impactful they are, right? And they're, like, like with Alua, for instance, the card in and of itself may not be on the same tier level as like a Fusoya, right? But just the threat of the S ability makes her one of the best cards in the game. And that's why we nominated her to be on the list. Because that's a, that's a, yeah, as that's long a, as you have a hand... Mm -hmm. the threat's always there. And that's an interesting pr perspective because uh, when I did my top 20 list, I put Shiva on the list and people thought I was crazy for putting Shiva on the list. But the truth is, is that Shiva, despite it maybe not even being the best summon, not even being the best ice summon, is such right. a powerful blowout card that you don't have to have it in your deck to win. You don't have to have the Alua special in your hand for the Alua special to win you the game. Yeah, just having the threat, you can go from, and, and Lightning likes to aggro, right? We like to push early. So you can go from two to three to four and just, you know, bluff that in. Now, once you get up to five plus damage, you know, they may call you out on it. But, you know, it's right. just like turbo. You just keep bluffing the Mateus. It's it's the same thing. Right, and, and, and um, it depends on what you're bluffing into. If you try to bluff into, if you're, if you're bluffing into... The light Zidane, for example, like they've already gotten their <clears throat> they've already gotten their value. Like they're gonna yeah, they're gonna yeah, ask you and say, okay, are you willing to lose the Alua in your hand? Assuming you even have it, do you want to lose it? Because I'll trade my Zidane for that Alua in your hand, right? All day. But All the day. good players are gonna make you put in a board position with Alua that you're not just trading that Zidane. You know, the, there are things getting haste. There are things that are un un uh, activating for defense. There's all kinds of really great things that it does, which is, right. You know, another reason I hate that freaking card. Um, so real quick, I will talk about uh, there. There were a few categories I had a lot of input on. The first, and when I say input, I think it's important for the listeners and the reason we're doing this to understand that while we are <clears throat> hosting this, and we can't say that there was zero biases, right? There, there, we can't actually say that because. That would be not not accepting our own bias. I think is is a problem. We're, um, we're human, right? Yeah. So, for example, best judge. Okay, um, there are a lot of judges on the list, um, and I thought that in order to find the best judge, the, the the judges that I thought of, right, is immediately Gabe, right, Craig Dobson, and Max uh, Williams. Those are the three judges that I know about, right, and so. To get a full list, uh, I, 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 I didn't feel qualified, and nobody else felt qualified. So we saw an outside source, and we asked RB, hey, RB, who is judging these events? Tell us the the five people that are judging the most, that are that are out there judging, period. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not their favorite, not RB's favorite, uh, not our favorite. So we put those five people on the list, and we let people choose. And we're going to get to... 
the judges and who and who chose but we felt like that was a very fair way would you would you say that would you agree with that 100 percent. and i and i can't think of a different way to do it um so we'll move on to another category um for for the, there's a couple more so moderator for example we have five moderators in the u.s group so i put five moderators on the list right that's just how it was um i put current moderators only no past etc 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 now the uh, another another good example let's see as i'm going through this list um The okay here here I, actually let's, let's just go to this because I think this is really important. <clears throat> One of the concerns is that a community isn't you know if this is a community event, why isn't the community the ones deciding this process? Now we we've heard that before, right? Yes. Uh, but the but what we decided and we had a what everyone needs to know is we had extensive chats about this. This was not decided lightheartedly. Um, we had very extensive chats about the way the process was going to work. And what we decided as a group um, was that we would nominate 20 judges to appoint these winners. The important part of nominating the judging was that these people could not have been part of any of... Uh, they couldn't be eligible for uh, nomination themselves, in other words. Um that was really important. We knew that a lot of the California people were very active, um, and so that they they would do well in this process. And, and we understand that that's you know they're active and they're deserving. So we're not they're arguing. Very well known, absolutely right. So what we did was, and in, in the fairest way that I could come up with, is I messaged uh, Matthew Rice and I messaged um, who uh, James. I messaged James Lockwood. These are, these are I messaged the moderators of the U.S. group. And without telling them what I was doing, I just said, hey, listen, I need a list of the most that the people that contribute the most to um, to the U.S. page. And of course, you had a lot of people uh, you had um, like he's like, well, you know, what about Okimoto? Okimoto talks a lot. What about, uh, you know, all these people that are like, like Gregory Cole, right? He, he's often posted in there. You have the RVA boys. They post all the time. Right, so you have all these people that he, of course, sent me, and I just said, "Okay, I need more, I need more, I need more," until every person that he sent me was not part of the team or a nomination, and I thought that that was a really fair way to go about it. Uh, so, in, in short, I guess that was really long. In short, the community is the is deciding this. Now, yes, not all the nom not 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 do they get to pick. We didn't leave any. There were no fill in the blanks, right? Um, and I don't know how you feel about the current party system in the United States, but we know that fill-ins don't usually decide on a, on a nomination. That's you could, exactly. right. You could write in Bernie Sanders all you wanted, but he's not winning. And you know, like you had to choose between Donald Trump and Hillary. The fact is, is you could put your vote in somewhere. I'm not, I'm not com comparing any of these to the, either of those people, <laughs> but it's important to know that the reason there were no write-ins is because look you're gonna think that you're shut listen i don't think that cool stuff does a lot for the community um as a, as a corporation but man does that shop support us and then we have sunshine games here who does so much for the community if 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 sunshine games were on the list i would vote for it 100 percent of the time it, right but People don't know about Sunshine Games. Neither of you guys, you know, Josh has never heard of it. Lars, you've never heard of it. I've heard of them. I bought from them. Okay, great. Okay, so, <laughs> but you're not voting them for the best shop, right? You're just right. not. And you don't right. know what they've done. They've done a lot for right. the community. No idea who they are. Yeah. Okay, right. So, so look, your your normal shop's not going to make it. And realistically, there were other shops that people do know about, like Epic Gaming, who also didn't make the list. And it's not because they weren't good enough. It's either two things happen with all these people that didn't make the list. They simply, and we just, do you, do you, it was quick, right? It was a yeah. quick, quick thing, a quick process. We wanted to get this rolling. People don't understand how much work is going into this spreadsheet and getting all of this done. It's a lot of work, a lot of messaging with people, getting these judges on board, getting everyone on board. Um, it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, and the original inception of the idea was, hey, 
we should have our own Emmys, like our own award show, right? So we, we basically took that premise and said, okay, there's a panel of experts, they have board, you know, uh, all these, these different people that are experts in their own rights and contribute to the community. And that's kind of what we did. We said, hey, let's find all these different people, yeah. like you said, that aren't being nominated and say, hey, help us out. This is what we're trying to do. Yep. And so I understand the criticism behind that. And I will say this, if we worked, if we, I would like for next year for us to work it towards like we the Oscars work. In other words, next year when we have more time and we know we're doing this, let's say early November, what we what we do is we send out, hey, listen, we're having these awards coming up. If you would like to be considered for a nomination, please submit your thing here, right? Or you'd like to submit someone for a nomination. Then we can go through that and there's still going to be some bias in, in individual decisions, but because of the way I think we worked as a group between Tantalus and the Choco Bros, we were able to eliminate a lot of that bias. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that way we don't miss people that are that, that want to be considered. Right. In our core group um, that we, we've been working on this with, we're all from different parts of the country. Um, obviously, Jordan being from Canada. So we all have very unique perspectives and approaches to the game the people some of us you know know the same people some of us haven't met some of these people so yep you know and then the 20 some odd judges that we brought in again are also from different areas so this isn't like five of sam's buddies you know from tampa and five of my buddies from atlanta these are right. people all throughout the country that have contributed x x amount to the game Right. And the other thing is important to know about the judge system is that, quite frankly, we didn't pick those. Even though, yes, we assigned them, right. the mods for the U.S. group, unwillingly, we unwillingly participated them in them, or, <laughs> you know, we voluntold them, gave us a list, and they picked those judges. I think that's really important to know that the people that are judging this contest uh, had no idea. They didn't know what they, they were signing they up for. They didn't know they were signing up for until after we sent them the, the judge letter. And and right. that had not and the judging had not been announced. The nomination process had not been announced. Nothing had been announced. It simply was what it was, right? Now that being said, it's also important to note that we are not voting ourselves, right? Correct. <clears throat> and we talked about that and we wondered, like, hey, listen, our votes should matter, and I agree with that. Our votes should matter. But realistically, like I'm voting Zach as the grinder, no matter what, when I vote. And and that's a very biased thing, but it's not because he's my friend. It is. It's because I've seen all the events he goes to. I see what he puts into the game, right? And and what I know about Greg is, 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 or Vince or, or any other, the other people that would be up for consideration is what I see on Facebook. But I see Zach all the time and I see him grinding. I see him playing uh, lists and he shows up to locals when he can as much as, as, much as possible. So there's going to be a bias. And I think that we understood that we're going to have a bias. There's no way around it. So we, at, I think we just agree that we cannot vote. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And to touch on same thing with Zach, like, I mean, I know all these other names. I know these guys. I've talked to half of them, but like Zach came up here to Atlanta. Like I have first hand experience with the guy, like, Dude drove eight hours to come and, and try and qualify. By, by so. himself, right? He, he yeah, literally got himself. in a car by himself and drove to Atlanta, right? And most people don't know that, and I get that. And yeah. I under, I understand that. But that, but the point is, is that you might vote Zach over these people. Exactly. And, 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 and then what happens is, is Jordan asks us, you know, and, and we say, yeah, well, we think Zach's a good nomination. And then, you know, Zach's in on the process, so Zach's going to vote for himself. Cody's friends with Zach. And, and sure enough... Whether Zach deserved the award or not, he's going to win. And so he's already got plus five in his category. Yeah, right. Out of out of however many we people we have, twenty five, blah blah blah. Now, right. there's another reason that we can't have a hundred judges. One, we really didn't want any collusion between these judges, uh, and that's why judges don't know who each other are. We didn't say, "Here's a list of judges. You're all voting." Nobody knows who each other are, and I'm sure there are messages. Some people have messaged each other, right? But nobody right. knows who these judges are, which was really important for us. Um, just for the integrity of the voting process so that 
one, no one messaged them, hey, are you voting for this person? Because that's who I would vote for. Um, and, and they didn't collude, like, hey, we really think that clearly, you know, the RVA guy should win. So all the RVA guys are going to vote for uh, RVA guys' message. Well, not that they would, you know, like they obviously have a freaking amazing podcast. Like they really don't need that. Right. But we didn't, we wanted to make sure the integrity was right. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that when the results were, were reporting in yesterday evening, we couldn't see who was voting for who. It was just a tally, yeah, right? Correct. We don't know who voted for who. There are a lot of. I think almost. I think everything is basically locked into this moment. Yeah. Um, right. So we know who the winners are, uh, but yeah, we don't know who voted for who. Um. There's just no way to know. And when I go over this list, I don't talk to. I talk to one of these people. I've. I talk to these one of these people. On occasion, not even very often, maybe every other month. So I'm not comfortable just saying, hey, who did you vote for? Like, you know, that's none of my business. Right. Um, and there's just no way, other way for me to know. Now, some of these, I will agree that some of these lists are very easy to, who, there's maybe one or two of these that, that I, in my opinion, are hands down. Hands down. But for the most part, everyone who messaged us was like, wow, this is so hard. Wow, there's a lot of really close answers. They had a really good time judging this, which is a really cool part for us, right? Yeah, we had a lot of great feedback. And that that was kind of self-rewarding for all of us in and of itself. Just like, man, what a great idea to like compile all this info and 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 get the community involved. Same thing with you. Like I've I've unfortunately never been to Korean barbecue. But oh just another thing that the community does that's like, hey, even though we play this fantastic card game, like we're still going to do other things outside of it. This is what we do. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and, 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 and the reason that we do Korean barbecue, just so you guys know, who, those who don't know, know is that we wouldn't ever want to miss, pass a chance to to wish Matthew Rice a happy birthday. Um, <laughs> and so we always do a celebratory birthday dinner. And while we're at it, we just want to say happy birthday, Rice. You're the man. Um, good luck in this event. Um, so moving on, let's talk about the actual the actual stream. So this is going to be streamed on the Tantalus page. Is that correct? Is it is it on the Twitch or is it on Jordan's Twitch? How is it working? Uh, we're trying to finalize that 100%. Um, it's mostly based on what my computer, what's what's easy easiest for me to facilitate for my computer. Um, I'm leaning towards probably Jordan's Twitter only because um, he has a lot of traction. Like there are dozens and dozens of people that are already like viewing some of that. And um, it's just a very easy s setup to do and he, live. So and now he also has a good poker following too, uh, which I think is really important because now we're exposing the game also to uh, a different side of, of people, um, which I think is really important as well. Um, so that's going to be really fun. And then we're going to host it on the Chocobos page afterwards on the YouTube of the VOD. So if you guys want to check it out, you can still check it out. But your primary goal should be to tune in live. That's going to be the most exciting part. Announcing these, uh, we're going to have them join us uh, in Discord. Yes, winners will be notified ahead of the time. Uh, I don't know when exactly we are notifying winners, but I would say sometime soon since we now have it locked up, right? Right. Yeah, for sure. In addition, in addition, we're also having presenters. So I, I, I feel more than confident to announce already that I know that Chris Adams is going to be joining us for presenting an award. Um, he's already uh, accepted that presentation. I know that um, James Lockwood is going to be accepting, uh, or not, not accepting an award, but uh, presenting an award. Um, I know that, that Sam from uh, Tantalus is going to be presenting an award. Um, the Choker Bros will present an award. Uh, Tantalus, you guys will present an award. Um, and then we have a lot of other people that we still need to reach out to that we'd like to present. Um, in other words, what we're trying to do is open this up more to the community and make it really about the community. And I think that's like the most important thing for people to understand that we're getting, we don't get anything out of this. There, there's nothing out of it that we get. Um, and, you know, I, I, Tantalus is pretty new. So perhaps it, it's harder to follow their, their track record right now. Uh, but, you know, that could change by next year. But if you follow the, the Choker Bros track record, our, 
motto has always been to grow the game. On on top of that, we really we've never done, and, and I don't want to slight anyone that that, that accepts money or uh, patron. That's really cool, and it helps you guys get by, and and I love that. The only thing we accept is a sponsorship from our uh, our sponsor, and it happens to do he happens to be our team sponsor too, uh, and so it just worked out that way. We don't want any money. We don't do this. We don't do this for any for any reason. We don't make money off our sponsorship. It just covers the uh, the cost of Adobe. Um, right. So we just do this for the love of the game, and I have the feeling that Tantalus does the same thing. So we're not getting anything. I I know there was one comment like, "Well, why do we need you guys to why why do you need feel the need to pat yourself on the back?" Look, dude, uh, to we're be, patting like everybody else on the back. Yeah. To be to be blunt, yeah. You know, if if Choker Bros win something or if I win something, I'm going to be super excited about that. But here's the thing. It's not because I was on the list. It's because those judges nominated for me and that's an honor. And that's awesome. You know, and when I lose those categories, that's awesome, too, because someone else got that honor. And to me, that's important and that's awesome. Um, and, and and so th- I think what people are, are missing that this is just supposed to be fun, right? Look. You know, I I know like some people are really excited for this. All the all the judges look. You guys should be super excited about what you could possibly win. But you're not winning a thousand dollar gift card. We're not paying you for a trip to the Bahamas, okay? <laughs> not unless we get Josh good. Josh, if you're willing to throw in some sponsorship money, maybe we can <laughs> we we can sponsor a trip to the Bahamas or a flight around yeah, the world. I want to I want to find sponsor for ourselves first of all. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to do this. Yeah. So you know, there, we're not. I, I, we're, Go ahead, Josh. I just want to say I really respect that you guys are doing this for free and stuff like that. Like, I, like the whole time you're talking about it and you're trying to say that, you know, you don't want to pat, pat, pat yourself on the back. I say you guys really deserve to pat yourself on the back because all I can think of is, like, how much time I'm spending on the game and not getting paid for it. I'm pissed off. Like, I will never do it for free, like, ever, you know. Not, like, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed that I have to do things for myself for free, you know when it comes to the team. you guys are doing things for the community so i'm always like he actually like befuddles me so i really respect that well thank you i i'm I, we appreciate that um thank you, yeah. but the, and, the, and, and at the end of the day the truth is of course we get something out of it this is fun and an enjoyment for us right and if the game grows that's also in our best interest so but yeah we're, we're really just doing because we love the game um and that's one of the, the most fun things so and that's some, that's something ahead. that i do too in atlanta is you know, every set, you know, I buy all these different cases of cards and and there's a bunch of people out there that have bought for me. Like, you gotta understand, I'm not actually making money off this. Like, I might make money off that one transaction, but once I break even, like, you can ask, like, Sam, my fellow Tantalus member, or any of our guys in Atlanta, like, I'm just dumping cards into the community. Like, we had an event, like, I don't know, maybe three, four months ago. I gave away 15 Opus 6 Legends. And we're talking, like, like just all kinds of stuff. I gave away two Yastolas too, the the good one, the Opus Five one. Not the Chinese and, one. And, yeah, no, not the Chinese one. But it, and it's not again not for me to pat myself on the back. You know, we have all a whole diverse community of people that you know approach the game in different ways. And sometimes when a guy's new to the game or he doesn't have a lot of resources or money to buy a bunch of cards, like for him to be able to win. Or, 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 you know, earn that that legend by doing all these different events that we that we put up. Like that's tremendous, and that's again leads over into this this podcast. So, like when we're when we're streaming this this live awards event, I'm gonna be interacting with, um, you know, the chat. Everybody that's 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 in there will have a shot at winning some different cards. I haven't decided exactly which ones and how many. Definitely want to give away a couple of uh, Noctis promos, that's for sure. But you know, it's just it's just to to keep giving back, to keep keep invigorating the community. Say, man, like, why would I ever want to leave? There's no reason to. There's no better card game out there. And, and while I, I just, def- sorry, go ahead, Josh. Sorry if I'm gonna cut you off. I just want to just like emphasize like how great it is that you guys have that because I I feel like maybe some people listening to the podcast don't appreciate it coming from right where i came from where i started when i was a new okay my store was selling me comments all right and and, and charging me for it they, they, were, they <laughs> have it like a huge promotion where they, you can buy six comments 
for one dollar and then i was like oh that's a great deal you know because you know you get so many cuts right because i'm a noob <laughs> so i just i and i bought like uh 30 40 dollars worth of comments and shit and then i found out that they that all the players they actually leave the comments behind at the end of the game yeah so when we when we when we do that here too so when we get our when we prize out we always just we take the foil and maybe the legendary and and we leave the heroics the rares and the comments. we just leave them on the table now right. sometimes we collect those to hand out to newer players but for the most part we find that if we leave them on the table it leaves a presence for people who don't play the game to see them as they walk by and you know yeah. it's, it's the same let me give you another example you know I, I know Lawrence you uh, you were also part of this um, this this effort to make this reunion amazing you know um, but when we found out about the reunion you know people you know, the the choker for example we we immediately I sent my nationals play Matt I sent all kinds of stuff I said let's make this awesome you know and i know that you guys did that as well but then other right. people in the community did you know we, i know that genesis um had a major like uh contribution in like getting stuff together to, to send over to them and and when people put on these events right no matter it seems like no matter what you do to make things great people are going to complain right um i think the recent announcement uh from rb um when they posted about the the competitive event series is basically a great example we are literally a strict upgrade from last year right but there was so sure. much negativity and and i get that people want what they want look i i'm with you if times if if time is not fixed soon i'm gonna riot but <laughs> but i i also look at it and say like hey man like this is good like we are moving in a positive way i think that the community awards I think it's one of the, I think it's more of a genius idea and certainly less cancerous than DGS, uh, true ice. Right. So it's, it's gotta be Jordan's greatest idea. Um, For sure. and, and I just think that this is such a healthy, cool thing to do. And that if people don't like it, and I understand you do have two options, you can make your own and see the kind of work and effort that's put into it. And you'll probably do an awesome job. I, 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 I really think that you'll do an awesome job. And I encourage that. If you guys want to make your own type of award, look, there's the Emmys, there's the Oscars. We don't have to be the only ones. Be, feel free. That's right. Okay? The other thing is, is you could just not watch it. You don't have to watch it. You didn't put any money into it. You did. Most of these people that are complaining, it's the first time you've ever seen them sound off. Right? Is a, and, and so I, I'm just being honest. So, agree. so, so for them to suddenly be vocal and be upset that the people that are contributing to the community on a daily basis are being recognized, or even to say that we're patting ourselves on the back, you know, look, like I, I, I argued against me. Like for example, I'm just gonna be honest. I do not want to win MVP. And this, and it's not even because I don't think like I try hard. I do try hard. No, there's just way better players than me. Let's just be real. There's way better, right? But like, I certainly would love to win a lot of the content creators. I think the Choker Bros does a really great job. We try hard. We put a lot of effort into our our podcast. We don't get as many out as the RVA. We don't have we don't have Curtis uh, of the Turks. You know, like geez, I mean, Steven does a good job too, but like. That guy, I don't know if you guys heard his podcast today, but holy crap, it was good. You know, triple no, triad, you know, like, I really think Jonathan does an amazing job. I'm not going to be sad if I don't win that. That's fine. I'm going to have a good time. I'm not patting myself on the back. If I win it, we're going to be excited. Um, and yes, I already know the winners. <laughs> we already have the nomination. I'm just not right. telling you guys. <laughs> but, you know... I I think that we're really excited about this and we tried our best. We made sure we didn't vote. The judges were picked by uh, a different community that didn't even know what we were doing this for that, you know, the, the, I, I don't know what else I think we could have done except for the thing I talked about where we said we could open it up for people to nominate people. And I think that's a fantastic idea, but honestly, we didn't have time, right? We want this to be done in 2018. It's a 2018 awards. Yeah, I mean, Christmas is, is a week from today. Like, time is real. Right. And, People travel. They do things like, you know, it's and it's hard. It's hard to even get a podcast together and, and get people to attend and watch it live. I mean, people are busy, you know. It's, right. It's so we need enough time so. to put it out there. Right. But right. we also need and we need enough time to do stuff like prizes. Right. But we're waiting on judges to hear back. 
We don't know if the community is going to respond to this in a positive way. We don't know, you know, if, if the presenters are going to accept. So it takes a lot of work to get this done. And so we have to set deadlines and we have to accept that we're going to miss some things. A great example is Epic Gaming. If you were to say, who's Epic Gaming? I could tell you because I watch their stream every single week. The Final Fantasy one, I tune out on the Magic and the and the the um the other games. Uh, but I watch their Final Fantasy stream every week, and yet they didn't make the list. Those types of things are going to happen. Um, I think that, in my opinion, the we had some conversations, for example, about if the RVA guys should be nominated for a team. We decided, and and I think rightfully so, that they should be nominated for a team, and they should go up for a team award. And yet, they're not up for a team award. It has nothing to do with they're deserving to or not deserving to. It's simply, we were so busy doing so many things. That was the one thing that just didn't get written in, right? Yeah, no, 100%. And, and so those things are going to happen. And and I think that, you know, I can I could speak for both the Tantalus and the Choker Bros that this list is by m no means perfect. But it is a good list, and we're confident we're, in yeah, our nominate. We're, we're confident hard. in our nom nominees. I'm not sorry about the people that were nominated. I won't apologize on behalf of, of the stores that made it and the websites that made it. I am sad that we didn't have a list of 20. You know, there are, there are certainly 20 stores. There are certainly 20 grinders in the U.S. that are deserving to be on this ballot. But realistically, you're... We're those are, we're not going to get a a clear winner. We're going to have you know what what you could have happen for to give you an example. We and surely if we had more time, we could have more judges. But let's say you put twenty <clears throat> stores on the list, you could have one person, one of the, t the stores get two votes, and everyone else gets one vote, and it's like oh well that store wins, and it's like really like two people on the judging list happen to have gone to that store or something like that. You have a very biased decision. Where I feel like the list that we came up with, it was hard for a lot of these judges. It was hard for me to think about it, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm even comfortable saying who I think should win, who I would have voted for. Um, but they were hard, and I'll tell you, uh, I would have voted for Fasoya. You know, Fasoya may or may not win, but I can say that because it's a, a card, so I don't feel bad calling it out. Um... But, you know, I think it was a hard decision. I play a lot of Fasoya. I've won with a lot of Fasoya. Dataluma has won me a Crystal Cup. Um, and a Petite Cup, actually, right? It won It won me both in yep. Kansas. It was in both of my decks. Um, and I would never vote for Alua because it knocked me out of Boston. It knocked me out of Nationals. Um, it was my loss... It was a it, it, listen. There, I've never lost a card more, so I I wouldn't vote for that, you know. So I think this list was pretty hard. Uh, Josh, from your perspective, um, as someone internationally, what do you think about this? Do you think it would work on a grander scale for international? Do you think uh, a group like uh, you guys or, or Mr. Cool would be a good example? Could and Joe Hill would be a great example because he's such a great commenter. Could push something together like this. Do you see that happening? Oh, I don't know. I think like uh, maybe culturally, it work because uh, you know you. I think in America you have like a very open culture. Like everyone's very like like in, in Asia we call gang ho. So it doesn't make sense to you guys. But like you, you guys are very hyped for each other. You know like. But it, I, I feel like in Europe and Asia, like no one gives an actual shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like people, when, when you when you do this, like you know that there was like this joke, right? Like if you if you see first class in, in America, people say, "Wow, well done, congratulations," you know. And if you if and, and if you see first class in Europe, like they'll be like, "Fucking, you know, like fucking communism needs to come back, like we like 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 <laughs> revolution." <you know>? Like. <clears throat> That's the that's like a huge difference, you know. You go to America, everyone has a huge smile on their face and stuff like that, and it's yeah. it's, it's not like that in the rest of the world, right? Yeah. So, I think we've covered that, uh, Lawrence. Do you think we covered everything that we were really hoping to before I move on? I, we, we have two. I have two more subjects I'd like to to cover. If you gentlemen have the time, they won't they won't take long. Um, yeah, please. Yeah. But do you think we covered that? Are we pretty good? 
Uh, listen, I, I will say this. If you guys have any questions, I don't, we, we as a team don't mind answering them. We, we, we put a lot of work into this and we're proud of it. If, if you're, if you want some questions or you have some feedback, I think we're all ears. Um, yeah, but by all means, uh, by all means, take it as a fun thing. It's just meant to be fun. There's, there's nothing else to gain out of this other than a, a good time. Okay. Grab a beer, grab whatever your favorite drink is, sit back on Saturday night on the 29th and enjoy this, this cast, this live stream. Okay. And, and just have a good time with it. All right. Sound off in the chat. That's all I got to say about that. So two things. The first thing I want to talk about is I don't think that we should have, that it would be fair to have Josh on without giving Josh a, a, a moment to be able to talk about his world's experience. Um, both some of the bad and the good. We already know he tried to, people already tried to DQ him because of his pink robe. Um, <laughs> but talk, talk man, to us I a little liked bit. It, yeah, I like the robe too. Um, talk to us, but, but Josh, you didn't make it on stream. Is that correct? Yeah, I didn't. Do you, that, that's think, not big do you think that it had, yeah, but I, I want to know, do you think it had to do with the pink robe? What do you think it was? Because I'll tell you, I thought it was fine not to have you on the stream up until it was you versus Toby. Everyone knows about Joby, okay? I I yeah. wanted I wanted the the Joby match on stream. I was yelling for it in chat, you know. Um, talk talk to me a little about the world experience. And, and what about particularly that str that match? It, it seems like Dude, that, that would be the one on stream. Was even my girlfriend was saying like that match should really be on stream because. It was insane. Like it, it, it got crazy, man. Like it was just like it, it was. It was like there was like pop wipes on both sides. Like and it became like a top that war war and shit and towards the end and stuff. Like that it was really crazy. Well, so, of, co of so, course you're gonna be in because you guys know each other so well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But I mean, like it. I mean, like me and Toby just like know our play style so well. So you know, it gets weird. And of course, I hope that. It, if it was on stream, then it would clear up the whole cactus controversy. Right? Great. Like, so let's, why... let's talk about it. Yeah, and, and, yeah let's and, talk about and that. I, and I'll say this. I immediately, you know, I've seen a lot of things happen. That's not one I've ever had happen. I've never, and, and I've never had two cards identically flipped upside down. Now, it's not impossible. So talk to us a little bit about how that happened, what the assumption was, and what the confusion was. Okay, so here's the thing. There wasn't any confusion until after the game. So here's the thing, right? You have to realize that, you know, the whole reason why I came on the podcast because I really want to address this, you know? And the thing is... No, you like, mean you, so mean you came happened? on because you love the, this podcast and this is oh, just a course. bonus. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I love that. <laughs> All, right. All right, go ahead, though. All right, so uh, the main thing is, uh, first of all, they keep our decks before and after the game immediately. Really? Okay, but but were they checking yeah. it before they, and after each match? They check, of course. They, they check it. They seal okay. it. They check the decks after everything. That's a lot of they work. They seal it out in a plastic bag. In, in a plastic bag? In a pla in a bag like a ziplock bag. They put it um, in the ziplock bag with your name okay. on it. So they go to the table with that ziplock bag with all your decks, all three of the decks inside. Put it on the table, and and your opponent is staring at you in the face. The whole time, or you choose your deck and play play the decks. Gotcha. So you scoop it you, off you the table. I mean? So there's no way you end it off. To, yeah, no, no way, impossible for me to like manipulate the deck in any way and or whatsoever, so, right? So when you're done, so let's say you finish your match, you finish game uh, three against the match before Toby. Now I know it happened after Toby, but let's just say, for example, even with Toby, you you finish the match, right, and you're shuffling. Right, you immediately hand the deck in before you get up. Is that what you're saying? No, you 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 take the deck out, and then uh, you they, they let you pick the deck out to Michelle and pass the deck to them. But I'm talking so about right after, after the match. After. after the match, you pick you uh, you hand the deck immediately back in. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Immediately back in. But there, there's a period of time where you could walk there. You know. Okay, so playing devil's advocate. And just so you have a little bit of chance to explain yourself, sure. you let's say you had two cactars on the field during the game. Yep. Is it is it not impossible for someone to when they're picking up their deck to take those and purposely put them in upside down? Yes, there is. But what I assume, first of all, that that's the thing. You see, this is the double sided argument because what I say is possible for me to do that. Mm -hmm. 
know if they check the deck before after gotcha. your, your match. Gotcha. And that's one. And number two, if that wouldn't happen, how they found out my cactus were flipped is after I turn in my deck, and then they they and then they they they, they realize two cactus were flipped. You know. So if I were to cheat, right, wouldn't you, I have flipped? You the would deck flip them back. The gotcha. Of course. The right Threaten me, you know? Well, yes, but I guess I guess playing devil's advocate again, unless you wanted them flipped that way for the next match. Oh yeah, well. But no, it, I get it, you. But if if you know that they're checking, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Of course, I get that, and I think yeah. that that was part of the story that was missing. And and you know, and we've already talked about this, Josh. But you knew I was skeptical. It sounded a little bit shady, but but that's part of the story that was missing. Not to mention, they were also uh, we we were told that the cards were also upside down in their sleeves, which is not true. So is that correct? Complete, like, it's complete falsehood. Like, okay. completely not true. Yeah. Right. And, I've, and, I, and, I, and I'm not going to say from where, but I've received official verification that that was the truth, um, that they were actually the, in the correct way in the sleeves, and that just the two cards were flipped upside down. In now the you're, sleeves. In the sleeves. Right. Or no, what, normally, like they, like, the, like they were that's supposed that's to be. Not. Now you're new yeah. to card. You're new to card games, uh, yeah. TCGs. This is your first TCG, but I hope that you understand that the prevalence in cards like Magic and particularly in, in Yu Gi Oh. I mean, of cheating in Magic and Yu Gi Oh happens even at the highest level of the best players because of pressure to do well. And I'm not making an excuse for them, uh, but course. I'm saying you have to understand where this skepticism came in. Now. The, com the community did a great that. thing by taking it on the chin by just making these funny cactar memes, and they're pretty funny, right? Yeah, they're, they're funny. I don't care about the memes, but I and I and so far I haven't heard anyone actually tell me that I'm cheating. Because if I did, I would flip out. Like I would actually flip out. I would actually like like go on like a like a crazy stream or some shit. So 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 far I haven't heard any. Like as far as I know, I heard no one. And so as as soon as I I, I thought that you suspected that I was cheating, I immediately confronted you. You know, right, that's how I, like, right. And we and we talked about it right away. And I told you my concerns. Um, of course. Here's the thing: I'm a very blunt person. If someone asks yeah. me a question, I just say what it is. You know, and 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 I was very honest with you. I said, well, here's why it looks shady. Here's the problem I have with it. But I just want you to understand that. That I don't think the community was out to get you so much as is hey look like we don't need this shit in Final Fantasy you know like like this is the greatest community this is the greatest card game in my opinion I've played a lot on Earth so, and we know we know that cheating happens in Final Fantasy because it happens in everything in life um, so mm -hmm. to, to to hear you clear it up is really good news to me um, and, and and I super appreciate your willingness to come on and talk about it I you know like. I think that's oh, really I, cool I, of you. I'm happy to do it. I want to do this because then I can I can tell people to you know you know fuck off you know like like yeah. this is what happened. So right now there's no confusion about so whether the I have a, I my... have a question for you. What is your uh -huh. and I know that you're a big fan of BMing because it's funny. What is your uh, opinion on the white mage? On the <laughs> white mage? Oh, about him tossing the white mage? Yeah. Like I feel like take a too much of a deal for no reason you know like like for me right it's like it's, it's not a big deal like, like you would do, you like you would have done the same thing well, i mean like i wouldn't do the same thing because it's, it's not very nice but you know i i do recognize when someone does something like that they are not thinking about it. right that's fair and i will I, I will i will say this you know despite despite josh's ban on the us page and the fans page I have heard from multiple sources, and you might not like this, Josh, but that Josh is actually one of the nicest guys in person. Oh, really? Huh, funny. Yeah. Don't ruin his rep. I don't want to ruin his bad guy rep, right? I don't, you know, we don't, <laughs> we don't need Jamie the bad. What, what they used to call him, the bad boy, London bad, bad, bad boy, bad boy. London bad. Yeah, we don't, we don't need the the Singapore bad boy. But I heard you're a pretty nice guy. Oh, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I feel like I, I don't, I actually, I don't think, you know, just now when you were talking and you were saying something about like, uh, you're, you're making a, a critique about something. I, I can't remember yeah. what. And I was thinking, how is, how did Sam do this without sounding like an asshole? <laughs> it's, it takes a lot of work and I've sounded like an asshole a lot of times. So it takes, it takes a lot. Listen, I've had to re-record too many podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it down. Yeah, because. I, I was thinking about what you said. I was like, 
if I said that, I would sound like a huge asshole. So <laughs> how, how does he do it? You know, so I'm, I'm always like thinking about things like that. And For, you have to, you're a so, businessman, right? So you, you, you have to practice and, and get that and get that skill, right? Josh, let me ask yeah. you a question about those captors. I, I was curious when I heard about all that. Um, you got a game loss for yeah. for that, right? What was their reasoning? I was very curious to, to hear what their argument was. Okay, so uh, what Tim said, by the way, I was like a super like bright-eyed, naive kid, right? Like walking there and then they're like, hey, can I come to a room for me? And I was like, oh, what's happening, you know? And then they, they, they gave me the news. And, and what Tim said was like, listen, like uh, I know like... I, I didn't like when I saw it on stream, like I didn't like it and I saw and, and I went and checked the deck and then this cat goes with flip and stuff like that. So I talked to them, everything. Now, now the thing is, like normally this is a DQ. I and I have DQ people for less. But because we know that like, you know, this is this is probably an accident and all this kind of thing. Uh and, and you know, we know that you're not the kind of guy who will cheat. So we'll give you a game loss and, and, and you're lucky it's not a DQ. I and you. I, I was so like, you, oh, I'm so lucky. So, so someone lucky. gave you, so basically you got a pretty good favor, um, yep. which is good, you know. Um, that's inter that's, that part is interesting to hear, almost raises a lot of other questions I'm sure Lawrence is thinking the same. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, that that's just really interesting. Um, you know, they say the punishment fits the crime. Do you think... Do you think it affected your match? Not so you got a loss. Obviously, that affected your match. I get that. Do you think it affected you, your mental state? One hundred percent. I actually really want to talk about this because I feel like uh, this part, the mental part, right? I, I never heard it ever in podcasts or like articles and stuff like that. But mental is so important in the game, and I actually lost, right? I, I don't believe, like I, I, I completely believe that I lost because of the game loss. And it's not because of I I mean obviously the game was, but because well the first game I I, I played like a god the first game okay because I, I woke up at two a.m. I I practiced my matchup and I, I was like thinking so hard to match up and then on the second matchup right somehow I just game two right I know that if I win that one I'll go on to the next round and I somehow I just lost the will to win for some reason so, so you were men like, you were mentally fatigued is what you're saying yeah yeah mentally fatigued but not less of mentally fatigued like i wasn't tired like mentally i just i was emotionally fatigued i got you yeah, I, like i, I understand. felt like i didn't care anymore i got you no i i can i can completely understand that perspective yeah because like a lot of people don't understand about that and i feel like for example if you were to watch the games right like i want to talk about this also is that the reason why i believe that jamie and alex did so well is because i don't believe jamie has the best deck and uh, like, you know, Jamie's obviously a very good player and Alex is a great player, but they are like very consistent players, you know? They, they, are, they, they, don't, they are not the kind of players that do crazy shit. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, they, they, um, their mental is so strong that when they come into the game, right, they, they are there to win. And even day one, when, I, when you walk into the room and see the people and you look around, right, and you could immediately like identify like who's there to like really win it. You know, you, you can tell like the like their their whole like mental state, their energy and stuff that is completely different. Right. right. Yeah, that's something that's something I've noticed too is that they're round one, five, and nine. They're all on their game at the same level. A lot of people from what I've noticed in some of the, the limited tournaments I've been in, you know, they they have a rough first or second game, right? Like they have to kind of get in that mindset. And then by the time the tournament's coming to fruition, they're just kind of like, you know, they're so, like you said, mentally fatigued that now they're they're off their game. Yeah. You know, I, I guess. I, but I feel like that's one mm -hmm. of the reasons that I, I have done well in some events, too, is I feel like oftentimes I will X2 Swiss. Um, I'm, not, I'm not the best player. I'm playing the best that I can. Uh, you know, I, I'm having a good time. Yes, I'm trying very right. hard, but I'm, 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 you know, I'm not the best player. But day two, I'm the same player as I was day one. And then I play, I, I tend to play against people who are just so tired. They didn't sleep. They stayed up way too late testing, you know, and they just play differently. Right. You know, then, then I feel like if I were to, I would have played them the day before, I might have been in some real trouble. <laughs> and I, I know you guys obviously haven't seen, you know, I haven't been out to any big events unfortunately 
I plan to this this upcoming season. But like when I when I prepare, whether it's for an LQ or just something locally that you know we ran like a two deck tournament, um, we had a pretty good turnout, like sixteen guys. I I I'll sit and play my decks for like four, five, six hour periods. I don't I don't jump in for like one or two games and then go away because I want to make sure that my four, fifth, and sixth hour are as strong as my first. I feel you. I think that's really important too when you're playing in locals. Um, one of the things is a lot of times when you're playing in locals, people are like, oh, we're, it's time. It's 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 nine. It's eleven o'clock. Let's go home. We'll split. You know. Right. You know, in every locals I've played in, in the last three or four weeks, particularly, I've really adopted this attitude probably very recently. I have forced a play out all the way to the finals and forced them to play the finals out with me. because And I used to just split top four, top eight, whatever. But the truth is, is that I, I realized that, you know, just the more reps I'm getting, the better I'm going to be. And I like to, you know, I really just support my local scene a lot. So I really try to keep their interest, their their minds in the best interest. But at some point, I also have to say like, hey, look, if I if I split here, I'm losing equity on becoming a better player, and that's not cool with me. Does that make sense? Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, would you have that type of stuff happen uh, back home in, in Singapore, Josh? Like, if you guys get the top eight, how often do you split? You get top four, how often do you split? Or you guys just play it out every round, no matter what? So the thing is, if if I if if it was me, like it was, no one was no one's getting no one's getting anything. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no one is with me. So every, I, I have offers of splitting a, a lot of times, but I never say yes. I'm like, no, sorry, you know. And everyone was ready to split or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know? That's fair. I uh, I know there was a time where I um, I had offered. So I, you know, I collect foils, and there was a signed uh, there was a signed set of foils up for grabs. This was at the Petite Cup, and. Um, it was it was one of the rare times, you know. I, I normally am not. I don't mind splitting. I've kind of gotten away from that recently. But it was one of the times where I was like, you know what? Like, I want that foil sign set more than I want to win this petite cup, right? Like, I'm willing to split right here, right now. Uh, you can have all the prizes. I just want the foil signed. <laughs> they actually said no, which was fine. Um, I ended up winning, which was great. But I just remember, like, man. There are instances where I'm like, you know what? I really want this. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll split. <laughs> uh, I don't I, know how I, often I, that happens, but I, I think you always have something in the game, whether it's on, you know, that that endurance and experience to get into those later rounds. Yeah. Um. Or, or you know, if if you don't and you end up losing, then it's like, okay, like, did I mess up somewhere? Do I need to, you know, did I miss call a meta? Did I do I need to tweak my deck better? Well, I'm one of those guys, too, that goes home, and no matter what, my wife can attest to the fact that I will change my deck when I get home, no matter how well it did the the, the night before. I will change it because it could be better, and I need, to find a, I need to find out what about it could be better. And I don't gain that information if I don't play out those extra rounds. And, and that, you know, I, I, I think about that quite often. Um, so... Anyway, actually, that kind of transitions into the last and final subject I want to talk about. The time that that has not happened most recently uh, is, Darren, we played a a two-deck event where I played Mono Water, basically Mr. Mr. Cool's List, and then I played Earth Wind, uh, which was actually... um, uh, Very... I think it 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 was more towards Jamie's List than anything... But after the tournament, I took those two decks and I was like, yeah, these decks are good. <laughs> you know, like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't change a thing about them. And that was the first time in Final Fantasy that I was sad to be like, man, maybe, maybe it is figured out. Like these, I felt like those two decks were so strong that I was like, I don't really need to change these decks. Like maybe I'll just run these at Evilies. Um, and, and I have since talked myself out of that. I'm going to try to break it i'm got you know i'm gonna work harder i think there are some really crazy cool decks out there that do amazing things um they have to be able to beat yuri and dataluma which you know what though that's no excuse right like, that's way better than having to beat jesper Th- thaumaturge yeah. and i'm fine with that so i want to talk to you guys about that what do you guys think about the opus 7 meta right now how well defined is it 
what do you guys think the best decks? We'll start with you, Josh. Fucking toxic meta. <laughs> <laughs> because because we are in a meta, and you are set out, you the like uh, in most decks, Yuri or Dalma or whatever it is, right? Or even like Ice Water, which I think is really good. When you are set out, right? I beat you. So the the lines of play, I I believe, right, becomes a little bit more linear because you 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 all you always want to try to set out because if, if you you try to out aggro the guy, they they will just break your spine like like really really quickly. It's like for example like uh, the whole thing with Sephiroth, for example, right? So if you try to aggro like a like a deck with Sephiroth and stuff that I mentioned, you know, dump your hand, which is always not good. Eventually the guy will play Sephiroth while while he has backup and you don't, and then you're you're fucked, right? So it makes your your play lead. You can't like adapt to a situation and like basically go all in because if you if you like okay if you realize that okay my hand is shit I have to go on in because I'm a great player I I I outthink my competition you you're not gonna win like that so I don't feel like the uh, the meta is that good and obviously because of uh, Yuri Dalaluma and stuff like that it it, it becomes uh, a little bit more predictable. That's fair. Uh, what about you, Lars? What are your thoughts right now? And if you guys go back and watch one of my podcasts, my latest podcast that I put on Tantalus page, um, I touched on this a little bit in there, that you cannot, in this game, especially now that Turbo's gone, you cannot successfully, consistently play aggro decks. Um, you know, you're not going to go through six, eight rounds of Swiss, top cut, and get to a final table and be able to aggro, aggro, aggro the whole way in a single deck constructed format and, and do that successfully. Um, it's, it's, it's just not feasible, right? So then it goes back to how do these decks operate optimally? And it's on four to five backups, whether you're Waterwind uh, Fusoya, right? You're operating on four backups plus Fusoya. Um, if you're on Earthwind, you're operating on five backups, leaving one open to to do different things, minor, minfilia, these other things, right? So so it goes back to, okay, so if if most decks, whether it's mid-range, late game control, whatever, operate optimally on four to five backups, which elements do that the best? It's it's earth, very clear, wind, right? and water. Very, very clear. Whether it's it's mono, whether it's it's two color. So so then it's okay, how do we take that information and put together a game plan, right? So water wind and Earth Wind, I feel like are the top two arguments can be made for both, um, mm -hmm. which is better. I'm I'm a little more impartial to to Water Wind, and then of course you know, Model Wind getting a huge huge bump in in the Chilinka and Yuri. Right. Yeah. No. I I I can see that too. It's it's great that we've reached a point in the meta game. Where there's sort of this rock, paper, scissors, right? Um, but there's also these other things. So, you know, I'll just say we had built some really insane decks here locally. We thought we're doing really, really well, right? And then you compare it to a list that was almost similar to some of the stuff we were finding where, where JFB had written an article on Ice Water, like a very aggressive Una deck, right? Right. Um, and that deck was insane, right? <clears throat> and, I, and I read his article, I'm thinking, yeah, this is almost very similar to the, I built like five or six decks that are very, very close to this. They're just doing these crazy, crazy things, and he's and he's kind of like, yeah, that's great, but like, I don't know if my deck can beat Dataluma. And I started thinking about it, looking at my deck list, and being like, you know what? Almost extensively, people here are playing these water decks right now. Like, very, they have Fasoya water. They have very, they even have Yuri water, um, and a lot of people are playing Mono Wind. So I had to pick up my litter of just like comboing off with all these cool things that were going on, and. Truthfully, what, what I think my failure was is that I failed to realize also that <clears throat> the deck couldn't beat Dataluma. Uh, and that was and that was cool because I like Dataluma. So I'm not I guess I'm I'm in I'm a little partial, I'm a little biased because I like Dataluma, so I don't mind if he's really good. But man, I really think that like there's some cool stuff you could do. Um if I didn't have to worry about him, but but that that the what brings me to that point is how you talked about you can't go through these rounds expecting not to play against Earth Wind. If you do well, you're gonna play against Earth Wind. The more consistent players are gonna be playing the most consistent decks. I actually don't know of a deck more consistent than Earth Wind. 
Um, there are decks that are probably more powerful. Mono Wind might be a good example. Water uh, Wind might be a good example. Water Wind for Shoya might even be more powerful. But Earth Wind's going to win a fair share of its games because it's just consistent and it doesn't brick nearly as often. You know? 80% of the time in, in the, the general shell, we'll call it, of Earth Wind, 80% of the time you're doing the exact same thing every single game. You're literally searching for Moogle. Or getting yep. Moogle back every single turn until you hit Minfilia where you get Moogle and something back. Right. Uh, and, and, and that's a very turned order of the way it works. And when I played in the finals, I was playing... Um, he, he opened up Mono Water. I opened up Earth Wind. I was playing against uh, Chad in the finals of our two-deck tournament. And I I had I turned one like Camel Knot. Um, because it's literally a mulligan in two, and that's all I had. And I played my best, and it was still a close game, but, you know, I, I, I lost, right? And then I played Mono Water, and this guy just, like, just perfectly curves out with Minor, Minfilia, blah, blah, blah. And I have to actually edge out that game, and it was so much harder than I felt like his game against me was. And I had to edge out that game, because Earth Wind just did what Earth Wind does. You know, right. it was very hard. Water wants to gain these incremental advantages and then play like a Cognazzo and win the game. And it's, it's very different than what Water used to do, right? Like, like you used to, my wife used to play Water and she'd play Monsters or, or whatever have you. And she'd build up a long, long game and then, and then kill your opponent at the very end. Water doesn't even have to do that now. It just gains incremental value. Every turn that can just sneak in one Viking hit is like a whole entire clock off of its, of, of its game, in game. Right. Um, and, and so what we found was, is that then in the finals, you know, it, it, we found that like both of our decks actually just did, we were like minor, Mephilia, Moogle, 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 Moogle. And then we actually had a very grindy game that ended up going to deck out. And it's just like, but that deck is so consistent. I wouldn't fault anyone for bringing it to Ivelisse. Um, but then Yuri's such a damn good card that I couldn't fault you for bringing, you know, where it does the best in decks worth Valfor, um, Diabolus, Chalinka. I wouldn't fault you for bringing Mono Wind or Water Wind either. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, the, the last uh, big tournament out, out in, uh, I guess it was Japan that Ban was posting, uh, it had Water Wind, Chalinka, Yuri. I mean, that was like, you know, what it does right i think and i think we had earth wind versus um wind water in the finals of um the meta potion with earth wind coming out top and i think steven won um from the from the turks he won his event with with earth wind um th these three decks are just pre-format defining um even but, in our locals, like we, like I said, we ran a two deck format. I brought Water Wind and Earth Wind, and even with the wind overlap, like I still pretty much face rolled until the finals, and I, and I literally because I am I've never been an Earth player, I've never put in a rep with Earth Wind, and I went six zero until I got to the finals, and of course I beat myself unfortunately, but I mean it's just it's just a testament to the deck. Yeah, oh. that's. I want, That's fair. Go ahead, I want to say something about Earth Wind. Like, uh, I, I feel that Earth Wind is not as linear as people think. And I feel that Earth Wind is actually a super high skill skill cap deck, which a lot of people don't do. Don't, don't Thanks for that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with you and say that it's not a high skill deck. It's one of the reasons I enjoy playing the deck. There are a lot of decision making. I agree with you for there, for sure. That's fair. But... It ha but you can't say that it's not the most consistent deck, right? Like, no other deck well, can just Moogle say, every turn. Yeah, but if you look at the current, uh, the current like backup lineup and stuff like that, sometimes you could get really awkward turn ones and stuff like this. You know, you could uh, like sure. yeah, draw sure, a minor sure. and no, no second backup or something. There are all these issues. I, I that always have. draw. I always draw Star Civil, and then Simi. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, like stuff like that. that like, you, can, you can think, but th that's like, of course, the, the thing most people hate about, uh, about Earth Wind, right, which is why Toby, like, hates it, is that he feels that a lot of, like, the, the, a lot of his power level are, like, high roll power levels. Like, if you draw, like, semi into Star Stable and stuff like that, he, he feels like those kind of things are a bit too high roll. But I think it's, it's how you play when you are not in the high roll situation. 
and 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 that that defines it. Like for example, if you look at like Alex's game with Jamie in the finals, right? Like there are some very very deep decision making there. Like there are, there's a turn where instead of playing another forward, he chose to play a backup, and then that affected the board like two turns later and won him the game. And like things like that, right? That like a normal player would never be able to catch. And that's that's the thing. Like any idiot can can get semi look. Lavina into Starsabil, Drunko mm-hmm. Kekos, Daluma and win the game, you know. Sure. But it's sure. about how you play the turns versus a very good player that knows how to like deal with something, knows how to pressure you the right kind of stuff there. And yeah, how do you like rest the pressure and rest it's all, all the, stuff. It's all the interim terms. That's exactly right. Yeah. And like, for example, I feel that like a normal player, if a bad player, right, plays against a bad player, yes, the bad player high rolls like a the, the, the one playing Earth Wind high rolls like a motherfucker, okay? He will never be the water wind player. If if they're both like not very good. It, it takes like skill it, it takes a high skill cap, right? To beat a uh, a uh, water wind with earth wind. That's fair. I can agree with that. And sure. and I think that's why I like our water wind deck that, that Jordan and myself came up with with the Sid 2 package, because it plays very unconventionally. We're very low on 2CP backups, and, it, and, it's, and it's even more so than Earthwind on those interim turns and the turns where you're drawing poorly. You know, we've had so many reps with the deck that we know exactly, you know, our lines of play when our, we are drawing bad. Yeah. And I, and I think that does define how, deck, how good a deck can actually be in the meta. Is not what it's actually doing, but what can it do when it's failing itself? Definitely, and like, and like I said, Earthwind has a lot of like hidden depths, which allows our calculation. Like Sam, you know, one thing. Sorry if I if I like go on a little longer. No, no, but, no, no. Uh, go ahead. When you when you mentioned that you were playing Jamie's deck for your for your event, and then you feel that Jamie's Earthwind is very good. I, I I would like I I disagree and the reason because not nothing no hate on Jamie okay I think he's he's, he's a good player and you know but uh the thing is like the the difference between Jamie's deck and let's say Alex's deck right is that like I feel that Alex's way of playing of win right he actually like like uh, pioneered a play style and I actually like copied like a lot of his deck the one that he played at Euros for my own current Dada Luma list and he actually like when you make the deck you should always like try to design a play style you shouldn't just like Make a deck that plays good stuff, you know. Like, and Jamie's right. deck, I feel like it does like plays good stuff. And and Alex's deck has a lot of like more depth into it. Like there are there are ways of like using Vanille and 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 Vanille is just not not just there to be like a fan free block either and a random block seven k blocker that, that doesn't die right. It it is there like sometimes at the right time to put the right amount of pressure in the right situation and also like the hackathon player, the three CP hackathon player to use a hackathon player at the right time right also takes a lot of like taught in advance also it's not not as simple as a lot of people think and when you take out all these kind of tools out of the package like hackathon flare vanilla not not vanilla but hackathon flare the 3cp one the 2cp one and then you just put in a bunch of experts right it's, it, it it runs contrary to like how the deck is supposed to be able to deal with many situations yeah that's good that's really good points um so but yeah, and, and I and it wasn't that I chose Jamie's list over Alex's because I felt that, um, uh, well, my list again wasn't Jamie's. That was I, it, it, my list was card for card, Mister Cool's water deck. But I was just mostly saying that my list was more like Jamie's than Alex's for Earthwind. Um, it wasn't the same. But again, it wasn't because it was his list versus Alex's list or anything like that. It's just the cards that I felt comfortable playing, the cards that I like, you know. Uh, I I like Noctis. <laughs> I love Noctis. I, I like Noctis a lot, man. So, you know, when I say that the type of deck, it, it just is what it is, you know. Um, Other than the Noctis, I personally, I was a, a lot bigger fan of Alex's list because, like, for me... When I look at a deck or when I build a deck, it's all about the backups. So if I don't streamline my backups, if I can get that package just right, I feel like like my deck is just going to dominate, right? And and I like to have that condensed list, like like what Alex had, whereas Jamie had, you know, probably I think three or four more extra 
different types of backups in his list. Not saying that it's bad, it's just for my play style. Like, I want to do the same five or six backups over and over again every game. And, like, uh, Alex, like I say, Alex is niche, right? Like, you, you are right in, in what you're saying about, about, about streamlining backups and stuff like that. Like, in people, a lot of, like, people who are, might be new to the game, right, they, 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 don't, they can't see this kind of thing. It's, like, impossible for them to see because when you look at, like, for example, my list and access list, the difference is like maybe like less. It's definitely less than ten cards, but like less prop could be like less than eight cards or even you know. And but it runs completely different. Right. Just like he runs sixteen backups or runs seventeen backups, and yet the list just like completely flips around. You know, there's like a completely different way of playing it, and a completely different like you know like a like a choice choices that you make between each turns and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Josh, you are you flying into the U.S. for this reunion event or what? No, I'm. Def- when is the reunion event? By the way, the reunion event is um, January twelfth. Oh, I might be because my girlfriend is actually making a U.S. Esther visa right now, yeah. and it's it's not gonna be like it's it's gonna take a while, you know, with Trump and everything. What <laughs> so, when is when is your girlfriend gonna start competing, man? I I played Sybil and in Octagon, right? Oh, does she? Yeah. yeah, she did. She did pretty well in the last. Was it in the Chinese tournament that I? The Thailand one. one. The, the Thailand, Thailand one. one. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I played her on Octagon a few a few months ago, and I was like, "Who is this? Like, I don't know this username." And she's like, "Oh, I'm I'm Josh's girl." I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> oh, nice. That's cool. It's funny. Yeah, she haven't been playing, but actually, we just like we started like her playing recently, like. She she told me that she she wasn't into the game because she had to clean up cuts too much, so it, it got her like crazy, because <laughs> there was so much cuts running like, running around, so she got sick of it. Uh, she wants to get back on. Hmm. Yeah. I... yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell 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 her we said hello. Yeah, yeah. They the the people uh, from America say hello. Yeah. So yeah, like. Like I said, and uh, you know, oh, by the way, Sam, like uh, if we're if we're if we're running out of topics, do you mind I I point something out? Sure. One of the one of the things that I, I really want to talk about in, in the podcast, right? Because uh, originally it's because I, I saw your podcast after Worlds, mm-hmm. and you were talking a lot about like the choices of decks that we play and all these kind of things, yeah. Right. Yeah. So. I, I feel like we we like uh, as a, as as one of the players at Worlds, right? I should have a like a like a I, I should have like a, a way to like a, a, a platform for me to like kind of like defend my deck choices and stuff like that and like why I'm running this card. Why right? why did you play the mono the bad mono lightning deck? <laughs> Dude, the mono lightning deck. First of all. So, so the thing is okay. So I think I might have hacked a little bit too hard for Gasper. You know. Yeah, that, I mean, you you kind of had to. That's fair. Yeah, but I, I was, but in the end, we didn't face much Gasper, and right. I was sure that I'm, I'm going to play against a Gasper deck from every single enemy player. So I, I, I expect at least six Gasper decks. So that's, uh, maybe six, because of Matthew and, uh, 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 what's the other guy's name? Uh, Nation, the, Nathan the, the second guy, the, sec- the, the guy who came in second NA, the guy that always plays Ice Wind. Yeah, Nathan Perez. Yeah. Yeah. So except for later and Matthew, I I was sure every single NA player is going to play Casper. So I, I I made sure of it that that my my deck is super packed out. That's why I run the six CP game and all this kind of thing. But other than that, I the deck is still like pretty good. It's just uh maybe without Casper, it would be a little bit more nerfed. I might have something I don't know. But Lightning is definitely uh supposedly stronger than Ice. And my water deck was a little bit like uh. I, I actually perform on my water deck because my water deck going into the competition, right? I, I was actually like pretty much undefeated versus mid range ice, for example. And I lost three games and they are crucial games. One to Jamie round one, or uh, one to Shota, but I, I beat him after that, so it doesn't matter. And the last game versus Lewis, which I mentally like fucked up in, in that game. I made a few mistakes that I wouldn't have made normally because I was uh, like I, I didn't want to win or I, I didn't like take the extra effort, push my mind 
to take the extra effort to see those terms in advance, which normally I would have. But I just want to say that a lot, of, a lot of the choices we made, right, is like is is very unique to 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 the to the game at hand and why why we're doing. It. Right, and I, I think that we felt some of those choices even here locally when we played in the two deck format, which you know is obviously a lot easier than the three deck format. But we we felt some of those choices. We also felt um, the fatigue of of playing different decks. There's a fatigue that you don't even think about. You know, where where a lot of times you can get in a rhythm. It's not necessarily always a healthy rhythm, but you can get in a rhythm when you're playing mono water. You always have this uh, the same plan. Uh, but when you're switching up decks. Um, and you're playing different decks, there's a fatigue that sets in that you really, you don't train for because when you're play testing, oftentimes, it depends on which end, like we play test, we tend to try to bring other decks to play against that we think will be popular, but not everyone does that. So you end up playing your deck over and over and over and over again. Um, and you get very comfortable. There's just fatigue that happens when you have to switch decks every round. I couldn't even imagine doing it into a third deck. Um, did you ever feel any of that fatigue? Honestly, I don't feel that fatigue at all. Like, uh, I, I feel like, you know, maybe it because I also practice a lot on all my decks, so I'm quite sure how they run and everything. But right, and, that and was when the... I see you on Octagon, you're usually playing a different deck every round. So you do, you have, you're, you're smart enough to practice different decks quite often. And I, I also, like, I, I ever since I, the first day I went to Locos in my, in my store, I never brought the same deck twice. That's every week is different. That's right. I've never brought and, the same uh, fifty cards twice to any event, period. But it's been close. They're not always different decks. <laughs> so you know that's the reason. But I, one thing I want to mention though, that there is a different kind of fatigue, which is when you have to play against a good player and a bad player. Most the skill discrepancy between some players right are really high. And when when you have to play against a really 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 good player like top level player right like Toby or like like uh, Jamie or, or Alex right it's mm -hmm. completely different from when you play against like who's not as good like it, it's, it's absolutely like absolutely so well, to you, be able you, to all, you also get punished right if you make a mistake the game could end that's the thing where round two versus round round two versus Jamie, I played lightning versus uh, Dalaluma, and then he played a Kambam go and kill someone, and I, I say GG. Because <laughs> cause lightning lightning is one of those decks that I mean, like I'm not talking shit about my own lightning deck. I think the lightning deck is super clean, okay, and and a lot of people didn't catch like why the deck is good and and the kind of like crazy shit you can do with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the thing is with lightning, always you you have to play perfectly. The problem with lightning is that. It, it, it can be really strong, but you have to play perfectly because the CP uh, trait is too fair. So if they have like one unfair CP trait, like they kill a four CP for like zero CP, it, it's over, you know? Right. No, that's fair. Yeah. So um, anyway, I think that's about it. We actually made it to an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, you know, both of you guys were super, super nice enough to join me at the very last minute. I really appreciate both of you guys joining in. On such short notice um you always know, happy to man thank you yeah we, i had a really good time i'm glad that we got a lot of the stuff talked about that we needed to um real quick again i want to shout out to cars at least for the sponsorship on this cast it wouldn't be possible without you guys i just i work for a non-profit i'm just too broke to afford to to do this um without my adobe subscription helped out with um but but also you know i want to shout out to to tantalus um which is a new emerging not just team but podcast you guys already have done a great job and and then you know to kick it off you're really starting with a bang by by coming up with this idea of the community awards and that's so awesome of you guys um just and i feel like you know when i when i approach cody and zach with this idea of of joining you guys with it, it was like such an honor um, for you guys to to just even think of us. So I do want to thank you guys and Josh. As always, you know I love when you come on. I love that you. you I don't think we've had a more reoccurring guest than you. Um, so I do. <laughs> I, I appreciate it every time you come on. It's a, it's a good time. But and and not only that, but just like after ha after conversing with you, like you're just able to give so much feedback. And it just shows that you're really listening to the cast, and that that means the world to all of us. 
Yeah, of course. Like, I, I really enjoy your cast and stuff like that. And uh, like, I, I always try to listen when I can. And you know, I really appreciate having you to talk to you because like, I enjoy talking to you. It's not very easy for me to like uh, talk to someone sometimes that I, I, I really enjoy. I feel like you know, the points is, is very valid, very relevant. And also, like, uh, I, I, I think you do a really good job of like bringing me in somehow. You know, like something, something about you that that just like make sure I don't go <laughs> off and say some bullshit. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. Uh, before I sign off, I do want to say, please, if you have not liked the page, go like the Tantalus page. You can find them at Tantalus Dash a Final Fantasy TCG Troop. Uh, if it's if it's that hard for you to find, go to the US page. You'll you'll see them as one as one of the the top uh, commented posts. Um, like them, set, like them also. When, as soon as you, as soon as t- uh, I'd love, Lawrence, if you guys could post when this goes up. If you could post your um, your Twitch also, as soon as you get that settled, I'd love for that to happen. Also, shout out to um, the Turks, the RVA, all the other guys who the um, I, the Triple Triad have just released that that video from the the Fan Fiesta. Um, you know, they, you guys are all doing a really great job. So, um, if you guys don't know about these podcasters, you don't know about these nominations and what they're about, please go check out and like their pages. Um, it would mean the world to me that you, that you guys went out and just supported us in any way that you can. Um, and also internationally to the the international, go check out Joe Hill, go check out, um, the crystal tower. These are all great podcasts and great resources for the game. And if you're just getting into the game, these are also great ways to become better at the game, to understand, you know, just having Lawrence and Josh on the cast today, hopefully you guys got a, an experience that, that allowed you guys to learn from their perspectives. They have different perspectives than mine. Um, and it just it just gives you a well balanced uh, perspective. We know that that people in Singapore they play differently than the than people in the UK, and they play differently than people in the United States. And for you to be able to get experience to all those play styles, I think is is really beneficial. And so thank you guys for joining me um, and, and making this podcast special. Um, I really appreciate it, guys. Of course, man. Thanks for having us. Yep. All right. Thank well, we'll, we'll see you guys later.